Welcome back. In this video I'm going to look at a new, interesting and perhaps slightly tricky aspect of NumPy called advanced indexing. To get underway I'm going to run that piece of code there which essentially just gives me a vector v of all the integers from 10 up to 35 in steps of 5 generated by the a range function. You've seen that we can index, with it, index it with an integer, we can index it with a slice. 2 through 4, or 2 up to but not including 4. So far so good, but there's another advanced way of indexing in NumPy which does not apply in ordinary Python, so-called advanced indexing. So I can index v with a list. The list you can think of as a selector. So I'm going to select item number 2, item number 0, and item number minus 1. So as you can see, the, there's the actual index. It's a list. And as expected, I select the item number 2, item number 0, and item minus 1, or the last item. Of course, the subscript can be a, a list object. It doesn't have to be an explicit literal list. So if I do that to set the index up and index v with index, like so, then I get exactly the same result. But wait, there's more. Even more surprising, perhaps, I can use a list of booleans as a selector, as an advanced index. So here I'm going to index with that list of booleans. Probably not surprisingly, the true selects the items that I want, the false selects the items I don't want. So that pulls out, if we run it, that pulls out the 10, which is corresponding to the true, skips the next two, pulls out the 25 and the 30, and skips the last one. Again, of course, I can set that value to an index, so I can say index is equal to that list, and I can use that directly as a subscript, v of index, like so. I can do the same thing with numpy arrays, so I could have that index is the numpy array of those values there, and I can index by that too. No surprise, or at least I hope there's no surprise there, it behaves exactly the same. And you may think, well, that's pretty weird. What possible use could that be? Just one little aside before I go any further. It, it make, makes the point here that elements are copied from the base array. So this thing is a new array. It's not a view into an array like the slice was. So what use is it? Well, it turns out to be actually remarkably useful. And I'm going to take you through a few steps as to see why this might be. So... We see that's the array v. What do you understand by v greater than or equal to 20? Hopefully you expected that. It's a, an array of booleans, which is true for every element in v that's greater than or equal to 20. OK, let's store that result into something called, I'll change its name to selector. So the selector is v greater than 20, and the values of that, of course, as you've just seen, are that. If I index with the selector, hopefully at this point, you're not surprised to know that I pull out the ones that are true, namely all the ones that are greater than or equal to 20. And of course, I can write that in one line, or one expression, by saying v, where v is greater than or equal to 20. A little bit of a hard way to read it, but that's what it is. And this is equivalent in effect to a list comprehension, those of you who've got them mastered at this point, I could write vi for vi and v if vi greater than or equal to 20. There's a list comprehension equivalent in ordinary Python. I'll get it right yet, v greater than or equal to 20. And that list there, gur, is exactly the same as before, except that it's now a Python list, not a NumPy vector or array. So that's what this slide says. You can read this expression here, v indexed by v greater than or equal to 20, as v where v is greater than or equal to 20, which is equivalent in effect to the, num, uh, the ordinary Python co list comprehension. Less readable, but considerably faster because of the um, vectorization nature of NumPy. You can also, of course, select the ends. So I could have ends as equal to naught and minus 1. That's the indices 
uh, that select the Norton la first and last elements in array. So for any V indexed by Ns, I just pull out the endpoints. So actually it does turn out to be useful, but it looks a bit weird. So that's all I had for this video, one of the shorter ones. Uh, if you find that a little bit confusing, then come back and look at it after you've got a little bit more NumPy under your hat, maybe, because it is a bit unusual. Thanks for watching. Bye.